Ayas drank half a liter of pasteurized camel milk from Sub-Sahara Africa's first and only camel milk dairy. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> camel milk dairy. The Bedouins of the world calls it the white gold of the desert. Back in the day, they can walk the desert and live solely on camel milk and dates. Camel milk is quite an amazing, and people don't realize it, but there are camels in over 100 countries. People all around the world enjoy the camel milk, and to understand and picture camel milk, I want you to take a look at the one minute clip. These camels, these one-humped dromedary camels, are the source of the milk that I just drank. I bought the milk at the supermarket shelves in Nairobi, where I live. This is Punvit. She gets camel milk delivered every day from Rajasthan to Punjab. The milk clears her gut. She has Down syndrome. And without the camel milk, she cannot develop. Now her father says that she can talk, and that's all because of the camel milk. Camel milk has 10 times as much iron than cow milk, five times as much vitamin C than cow milk. There's lactose in camel milk, but for some reason, people who are lactose intolerant can still drink camel milk. There's a protein in camel milk which is very similar to insulin. So if you're diabetic, if you drink camel milk on a daily basis, you can decrease your insulin intake by up to 30%. Welcome to the world of camel milk entrepreneurship. For the last year, I've been on the road with my team. We're a core, uh, core team of three people. On my left, I have Alicia Sully, who is the photographer and filmmaker. On my right, I have Philippa Young, who is a researcher, co-producer, and together with creative volunteers from around the world, we've been all over researching camel milk. It's quite an epic journey. It all started with the idea that we wanted to go around the world and discover grassroots cheese-making projects, cheese that have an impact in the communities. So we started to investigate different kinds of cheese that nobody really have heard about. We're looking into yak cheese, we're looking into horse cheese, and then we came upon something that changed my life, camel cheese. It is very hard to uh, make camel cheese, and for the milk to coagulate, it takes a lot of effort, and people around the world have tried it, so we thought, let's go out in the world, spend three months on the road, and see if we can discover how to make camel cheese, and what kind of impact it has in the communities. We started in China. We traveled up to Kazakhstan, Mongolia, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and along the road, after a few months, we realized that we cannot talk about camel cheese and understand it unless we figure out everything about camel milk. It was an epiphany, and it derives from all the people you meet who embrace the milk, from the experts to the nomads to the Bedouins. The milk is amazing. And you have to understand the people 
behind the milk, the herders. This is a Raika herder from India. He believes that Lord Shiva created him and his people so that they can come to earth and take care of the camels. How can camel milk support the marginalized people of this earth? There are two different ways that camel milk can be sold. The majority of the milk is sold in informal markets. You milk a camel, you take it to the market, you sell it. It's unpasteurized, it's raw. In the world now, there's a change. New companies and initiatives are set up where they milk the camels, they bring it to a factory or dairy, they pasteurize it and sell it in the supermarkets five locations in the world. You have Kenya, you have Mauritania, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, and Kazakhstan. I'm gonna take you on a journey to eight different countries to show you some initiatives that have been made in the world of camel milk. We start in Mongolia in the Gobi Desert. This is Sana. We found her on the internet. There's an NGO that was supporting her entrepreneurial quest and we had a meeting with them in Dalanzagad, the capital of the Gobi Desert. They brought her in, and we started chatting with her and asked her, how do you make your camel cheese? What is it all about? She said, I'll take you out in the desert and I will show you. So she goes out in the desert and talks with herders and collects their milk. This woman sells the milk to Sana, who makes camel cheese out of it, and sells it to different market women in town. They dry it and make it sweets out of it. They also make a kind of butter camel cheese that you can put on bread. The women milk the camels with one leg up and put the bowl like this. It's not easy. But this kind of business, the informal business, empowers people in the desert and creates a good income stream. In Mauritania, something amazing has happened where a company buys the camel milk from the herders. They don't own the camels, they go out in the desert and get the milk. Mauritania is a large country with a small population. Three million people. It's located south of Western Sahara, north of Senegal. This milk that they collect out in the desert is being picked up by bush taxi drivers. They bring it to a collection point where it's been chilled and put on tankers and transported up to the capital, where they pasteurize the milk and then package it and then transport it out to the market. They are also famous, this dairy in Mauritania, for being the first company in the world who commercially sell camel cheese. Unfortunately, EU regulations that not allow camel cheese to be imported here, but hopefully regulations will change in the next few years and everybody can enjoy the epicness of camel cheese. In Dubai, they are trying a new model. They own 2,500 2, camels. They milk 700 of them on a daily basis. And they use high-tech technology that they have developed where you use a milking machine to get the milk out of the camel. They pasteurize it and sell it in the supermarkets. The company is called Camelicious. Great marketing. In Kenya, there's a huge informal market. We traveled four hours north of Nairobi and talked with a cooperative of only women. They collect 5,000 liters of camel milk daily, put it in plastic bags and jerry cans, and ship it down to the markets of Nairobi, where they sell one liter for one US dollar. It's a great way of making sure that a lot of people can benefit from the camel milk industry. This is a Samburu woman. Her tribe have, for generations and generations, used cows as their main cattle. Now there's a change. The drought, the drought is coming more often, and the cows are dying. They are now transitioning to use camels as their main cattle. The camel survives better during drought. They can go for a week or more without water, compared to cows cheap. And they can deliver high quality milk even though they don't get a lot of water. Other animals cannot do that. 
In Pakistan, a new venture has started by two sisters. They were inspired by their father, who had been drinking camel milk for a year. So they decided to talk with a farmer, a camel farmer, and they buy his milk, they bring it home, put it in bottles, and deliver it to people who want their milk. This is Pakistan's first home delivery camel industry. They have a great marketing eye, and they have an idea how to scale this business, not only in Pakistan, but to other countries as well. In the USA, two mothers have started a small revolution. They live in the suburbs of New York City, and they buy camel milk from Amish farmers for 24 US dollars per liter. They give this milk to their children who are autistic. It helps the children to develop. They've seen how their children have developed, and now they have started a Facebook group called Healing with Camel Milk. They invite all of their autistic uh, uh, parents, friends, and all the experts in the camel milk world are part of this group. So there's this knowledge sharing going on that has never happened before in the world of camel milk. In Netherlands, back here in Europe, something amazing has also happened. Frank Smith decided a few years ago that he wanted to sell camel milk in Europe. So he went to Can Canary Islands and other places in Europe and there are camels, bought the camels, brought them back to Holland, and there they have 25 sheep camels that they are milking regular now. With this milk, they sell it to people in Holland and around Europe for six euro per liter. They also bring camel milk to a powdering plant. So 10 liters of camel milk is turned into one kilo of powder, and then they ship it worldwide. They're also helping other farmers in Europe to set up their own camel milk dairy. Australia. Back when the railroad was being built in Australia, Afghan camels were brought in. When the railroad and all the construction were finished and the people of Australia did not feel like they needed the camels anymore, they let them loose in the interior. There are no predators in Australia that can eat the camel, and there's heaps of food. So they started mating and became more and more. Some people argue that there are up to one million camels in Australia, and the government doesn't like it. They want to cull them. They're actually culling them right now. They're up in helicopters shooting the camels, and they don't know what to do with them. So when we travel around the world, we meet all these camel herders and camel experts, you feel this really sad, saddening energy from them. They're wondering, why does the people of Australia not embrace the camel like we do? So what should Australia do? Should they capture the camels? They should tame them and start milking them? Or should they capture them and ship them off to a country that will embrace them? Or should they capture them, kill them, and use the meat at least? They had this problem 50 years ago of too many camels in Australia, and they still have the problem today. So what's the future of camel milk business? In Dubai, they get milk, they ship it to Vienna where they make chocolate out of it, they ship it back to Dubai and they sell it worldwide. That might be the future. Or yes, using camel milk to make soap. Great healing properties, great soap. The future of camel milk might also be skin creams. In Mongolia and Kenya, that is happening right now. You use the skin cream behind your ears to get your eczema away, your rashes. Also, some people argue that it will protect you against skin cancer. The future of camel milk will embrace technology, and the idea with technology is that it will help the farmers to store their milk in hot environments. It will also help farmers to sell more milk. In Kenya, they are planning to expand now. They want to buy a big powdering machine so that 100 liters of camel milk can be turned into one kilo of powder. The problem that all camel milk initiatives around the world are facing is, how do you raise money? You have a camel milk initiative in Africa, but how do you make people believe that it will actually work? And who will give you a few millions to develop your camel, emission, camel milk initiative in the developing world? A lot of NGOs are supporting camel herders. They focus on sanitation, get people to understand that you need to wash your hands a lot when you milk the camels. They also help herders to bring the milk to new markets. 
What the caramel world needs is more in-depth research. We also need to develop a better dairy infrastructure. And we need to open up the Western market. I would like to try something I was thinking about this morning. If I say camel, you say milk. <laughs> camel. Milk. milk. Camel. Milk. Three things. If you have the possibility, try camel milk. If you can't find it, go to your local health store and request it. And foremost, when you have the opportunity, go out and tell people about the health benefits of camel milk. Thank you very much. <laughs>